my creative friends and welcome, welcome, welcome to Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. I am Dr. Manette Riordan and this channel is all about using art as a creative practice and creative process for self-discovery and personal growth. It's also about having a really consistent creative practice that nourishes and supports you. And when you have a consistent daily practice, you also become a better artist. And I personally have benefited so much over the last, I don't know, probably five years that I've been super, super committed to really making my write, paint, reflect method a part of my consistent daily practice. And this month I'm doing that using prompts from our end of year sale bundle that includes 118 really great prompts for self-reflection. And I have been creating a circle journal. I love working in the round. It's slowly starting to come together. We're only on day five of our 21 day process here. And I have not bound this book yet, but uh, you can see, good morning, Mary. You can see the, the pages starting to come together yesterday. And I'm really appreciating all of the, the prompts and how this book is coming together. And today's prompt is, what's missing in your life right now? What's missing in your right, life right now? Good morning, Judy. And when I started to think about what's missing in my life right now, there's not a lot. My life is pretty great right now. And when I get really honest, what's missing in my life right now is a little bit of time and spaciousness. It's been a very, very busy fall season. I'm leading a workshop in my studio tomorrow for 13 people. I have a lot to do today to prepare for that. So when I thought this morning about what's missing, what's missing is time and spaciousness to do my own creative work. And one of the, the things that popped up for me was how much I love working with our Sacred Circle designs from our Sacred Circle membership. These are like mandalas. We don't call them mandalas because mandalas are originally intended to be a very spiritual and religious practice. And for us, these are beautiful geometric patterns and designs, but they coloring and adding tangle patterns to the, these is an ongoing part of my own personal mindfulness practice. And in our end of year self-care bundle, we have included 36 of our favorite designs and affirmations from our Sacred Circles membership. These are brand new designs that we haven't shared outside of our membership. And this floral botanical one is one of my favorites. And I really love this affirmation, peace in the world is growing day by day. And right now when we're in a world where it doesn't seem like that peace is growing, if I can hold on to this intentionality here a little bit and remember that peace starts with me. So if I want peace to grow in the world, messing with my lights a little bit here, they're all of a sudden really yellow. If I want peace in the world, then I need peace in my own heart. And the way that I'm going to create that peace in my own heart is through my creative and spiritual practices. And so I took this gorgeous design and I reduced it on my printer to fit into my journal. And I know when I just need that little bit of a mindful pause, one of the things that really supports and nourishes me the most is my Zentangle practice and especially tangling inside what is affectionately called a Zendala or a sacred circle design. And I don't know that I got this quite the right size. I have lots of pieces of this journal sort of floating and coming together we had a, a great discussion on the value of connection and how much connection matters yesterday. And I have this mind map and then I'm kind of like, you know, I really want that mind map maybe to 
be covered up a little bit. I made these paper dolls on the show yesterday using Megan Quinlan's gorgeous stencils, her paper doll stencils, Megan Quinlan. She has a Etsy shop where she sells a bunch of stencils. So I have some ideas for different things that I want to do, but one of the things I wanted to do was to just spend some time and a little bit of quiet contemplation this morning and adding some pattern and maybe some color to this design and then I will cut this out and paste it into my journal. So in our Sacred Circle membership I get asked a lot what do you do with all of your designs? Well these are the kind of things that I do with my designs. I'm looking for my there it is my Micron 01. One of the things I love about the Zentangle method is the simplicity of the supplies. The simplicity of the supplies. So upstairs where I sit, I'm looking for, this one's a little bit of a dark pencil. There's my Zentangle pencil. It's extremely portable. Anybody can do it. I would say that looking for my little smudge sticks. So all you need for Zentangle is a tile, something to tangle on. And I had um, also in our creative self-care bundle this month, that's only $29. We have, um, I created a my first online class ever that's an introduction to Zentangle. I walk you through what the method is, how to get started. This is the first tile that we created and then I share also three hour long lessons on creating gorgeous Zendala designs like we're working on today. But what I love is all we need is something to tangle on which could be as simple as a blank tile like this one, a black archival permanent pen. Microns are my personal favorite. They're not everyone's favorite. A number two pencil, no eraser needed, and a little tortillon or smudge stick. These are used for graphite and pastel. And we're going to use this for some shading at the end. But what I love about the Zentangle method is this is all you need to get started. And so I'm looking at this thinking about where do I want to start? And because this one is so small, the practice is probably going to go pretty quickly. And I may just add some uh, color and contrast. I really love combining Zentangle patterns with some of my favorite mark making patterns. And I'm looking at the, the center here. And I'm thinking I'm going to do just something super simple here in the center. And what's so interesting, so this is printed just on plain ordinary cardstock. It's not printed on any fancy or special paper. Me too, Judy. And um, I can see that the, the ink is spreading a little bit on this cardstock. I'm not getting as clean of a line. These were done, this was done on some nice watercolor paper. And I love these little petal shapes remind me of the Zentangle pattern Crescent Moon. And so much of the work of Zentangle is done in this very simple practice of drawing a line, adding an aura to that line. In this case, I'm doing an inner aura. And an aura is simply creating some parallel lines and also some breathing space around a design. So when I look at what I'm doing, I want to make sure that there's breathing space between the different spaces of my pattern. And that's true even when I'm coloring some of my son. Connor is the one who designs all the gorgeous sacred circle designs for our membership. 
and I want to leave breathing space. I don't need marks in every single space. Here's another example of that pattern crescent moon. It's a very classic, classic Zentangle pattern. And this is where that mindful meditation comes in. Where I'm just sitting here quietly, feeling incredibly grateful for the time this morning. I have no appointments or any place that I have to be today. And I think with this one, I'm going to do just another little sort of floral shape inside that petal. I'm grateful for the company of each of you that are joining me live or catching the replay. Thank you for being here. If you're watching the replay, I love it if you just stop by and type replay in the comments, whether you're joining us on Facebook or joining us over on YouTube. And what I love about this method is that while my hands are busy, my mind begins to quiet and settle. I often have new creative ideas when I'm tangling, come up with solutions to problems that I've been thinking about. I often will remember something that needs to get added to my to-do list. So while I'm tangling, I usually keep a journal or my phone nearby. I use the notes app on my phone a lot for capturing ideas and to-dos. And how I start most of my days is with this method that I call Write, Paint, Reflect. And I would put the Zentangle under that Paint, Create category. I already did some journaling this morning. Did a big brain dump of all the things I need to get done. I have a long list, but I get to do them on my time. I have my uh, son one year for Christmas, Judy, gave me a gorgeous set of copper glass ornaments and Christmas ornaments, and I tangled on a box of ornaments that I still have. And I think in this little tiny space here, I'm going to create some stripes. And because I'm working in these small spaces and Zentangle is often done, I love to tangle big. So I will spend sometimes a few days working on a larger sacred circle design. And when we're working in these smaller spaces, we have to slow down, think about what we're doing. And I discovered Zentangle on an artist blog way back in 2010. I remember it so clearly. I took my first class in 2011. I had a hard time. I was living in Plano, Texas, and I had a hard time finding a, a local teacher, but I finally found someone who came to my office and did a private class for me and a girlfriend. And I was hooked from that minute forward. And in 2014, I went and got certified as a teacher. And I have a lot of different creative certifications. I have a lot of different creative interests. But this one, across all of that time, has really stuck. Has really stuck. Um, 
sure, Judy, I could do that. Uh, we haven't put up our Christmas tree yet. My daughter comes home Tuesday, and so it'll probably happen. Um, I can see if I can find it. It's not hard to do, right? So it's not, um, I would go to like Michael's or Joanna's or Walmart or someplace and um, get some really expensive, inexpensive glass ornaments. And the best pen for that kind of work I love the Identa pen, writes on just about anything, but it's great for writing on glass. So this is the pen that I would use. I mean, even something like this is just a, a plastic water container. So in the Zentangle method, the secret is always to rotating your surface, right? And so you would just come up with a pattern. I would probably draw a string, come up with a pattern, and then just fill the string just like I would flat. The trick is to just work your way in a circle around the design. But if I can find those old ornaments, I will find them and um, share them with you and how I did that. Um, <clears throat> I'm pretty committed to working in this circle journal right now. So these are some more of Connor's gorgeous designs. That one's kind of funky. I think that's a, a newer one. These are some of the new ones. But I wanted to show you in the sacred or in the creative self-care bundle, there's classes showing you how to create these specific designs. So there's three hour long classes in the introduction to Zentangle. That's a four hour class where you're going to learn a lot of beautiful tangles. The link to our self-care bundle is in the description of the video, both on Facebook and YouTube. So I encourage you to go check it out. It has two of my favorite classes, about eight hours of teaching time as well as a coloring book and two printable prompt books as well. So I'm just going to continue to add those stripes around the edges here. So even a design that is small like this could take a couple of hours to finish depending on the complexity of the patterns that we want to add. In fact, I may use one of these for some pattern inspiration. So what I hear a lot is people, you know, it's like they don't know what patterns to pick or they uh, keep using the same patterns over and over again. I'm the same. I use a lot of the same patterns over and over again. And so I think it's important to investigate like every October there's Inktober Tangles, you know, there's tanglepatterns.com. There's a lot of really easy places. Pinterest is one of my favorite places to explore new patterns. One of the other things that I love about this practice is that it really, you know, captivates people's attention. And I'm often not particularly good at just sitting still doing nothing like visiting and talking to people is not one of my favorite things. So like if I'm going to be with family for a day or a few days, I always take a sacred circle or a tile along so that I can sit in company and tangle because as long as my hands are busy then I feel um, like I can sit there for a longer period of time. So I'm just looking at these designs to see if there's something fun that I want to try. I do tend to use a lot of the the same patterns over and over. I really like this little pattern maybe for these outer leaves. Thinking, thinking, thinking.
even as I'm looking at these designs, I'm like, I'm, I use so many of those same patterns over and over again. So here's the same design as this one, but with colored pencil. I love coloring them. Okay, let's see here. So I was looking for something interesting to do here and I'm kind of drawn to this funny little pattern. So maybe some version of this little pattern. And I tend to make things up as I go. So not, I think, getting stuck in that you have to follow someone else's pattern or design, but to kind of looks like butterfly wings and then I'll fill that with a little fescue which is one of my favorite tangle patterns. And the other thing I love is that because this is small and it's simple I don't get too attached to the outcome. So I create so many of these that get tossed or put aside, right, that, you know, I don't um, feel like I have to love them because I benefit so much from the practice. And so when I stay committed and focused on the, the practice, and remember my prompt today was what's missing in my life right now is more time spent in quiet contemplation and creative practice. And when I make it about the practice, the process and not the product, I benefit so much more from the experience. I'm not attached. Do I want them to turn out pretty? Well, sure I do, especially, you know, as I'm sharing them here live, but that's not, you know, that's not the point of anything that I do creatively. <clears throat> I take that back. When I'm making a large painting on canvas, I definitely get attached to the outcome and I have a, a few that I needed to get off the floor hanging in my studio right now that I'm not particularly fond of, you know, they're just sort of okay. And yet when I look back and think about the actual creation of them and how much fun I had, then I can honor and celebrate that. And I also paint over my canvases all the time. If I have a final canvas that I don't particularly care for that much. I release attachment from outcomes and that practice of releasing attachment from outcomes has had a huge impact in every area of my life, especially in my business and my relationships. It's created a lot of freedom, less worry and anxiety. And I'm curious as you think about what's missing in your life right now, especially going into the holiday season, can be so fraught with stress and to-dos and cooking and eating and lots and lots of people. Or on the opposite side, it could be very lonely and maybe not your favorite time of year. Like we seem to have a lot of mixed feelings at the holidays. And that was one of the things that inspired me to create this self-care bundle. To offer these prompts in this beautiful Zentangle practice. Because it's very important to nurture ourselves and to care for ourselves in the midst of all the things that are happening, not just in this season, but in every season. All 
All right, I'm loving the way this is looking. I'm noticing where I'm going to keep some of the design simple and some a little more complex. Again, thinking about what's missing for me right now in my life is some more spaciousness and more quiet time. And that's no one's fault but my own. that I have to be committed to putting boundaries around my time and my energy and what's possible, being mindful of what I say yes to. My daughter and her partner are coming home Tuesday night for two weeks. I'm very excited. I'm also present too. There's going to be two more people in the house for a couple of weeks. And one of the first questions my daughter asked is, are you going to have to work while we're there? And I am. It's they're coming home pretty early in the season. So I will have some work to do. But I'm really trying to not work. And I'm very present to making sure that everybody, myself included, gets the time and space that we all need to relax. We all tend to need a lot of uh, downtime and quiet time. So if you're following along, I've kind of just made this pattern up. So I'm sort of starting in the center of this petal shape. And I'm just adding some long, three long petal shapes, almost like butterfly wings, almost a little bit like a uh, part of the, the pattern, Zentangle pattern flux. I'm blackening in the spaces between. When I work with the Zentangle method, I love contrast. So making sure that I have a variety of spaces that are dark and light, right? It's that contrast that's so beautiful of dark and light. Anybody else want to share in the comments what is missing in your life right now when you think about that question? Get curious about what do you need more of or sometimes it's what do you need less of, right? I need less busyness right now and more quiet reflection time. Last year, we got a new Christmas tree, an artificial pre-lit Christmas tree. I loved being able to just set it up and plug it in. And we put a few ornaments on it, more time in the day. Yes, ma'am, more time in the day. We put a few ornaments on it, but not very many because it was one of the ways we thought, okay, we don't want to fill our time with this. And uh, so simplicity sometimes is something that's missing in my life. Like I can definitely be someone that makes my life busy and complicated. I don't remember the name of this little pattern here, but it's super cute. So I'm going to see if I can squeeze it into the shape that I'm working in. I also really love this one. This one's called frondus. That's another favorite shape. But I'm thinking maybe even if I 
do this pattern upside down. Let's see what happens. So we've got a spiral in the center with an aura around that spiral. And then repeating these petal shapes around the edges. And maybe I'll take those petal shapes all the way around that center to kind of make it a little bit unique. That's kind of fun and funky. So taking patterns, making them your own, you probably see patterns and think, oh my gosh, I draw that pattern all the time. Patterns are not new. We've been as a species creating patterns since the, the dawn of time. If you think about cave paintings and what you see on the walls, there's symbols, marks, and patterns that have meaning, right? Symbols, marks, and patterns that have meaning. Again, blackening in the edges of that little funky flower there. So a little spiral in the center, a little aura around that spiral. And then I'm using the practice in Zentangle of drawing behind so it looks like those petals are tucked behind this shape, not overlapping, but tucked behind. And I'm just working to fit the petals into the shape that's here. giving them some little line weight, little flicks here in the center to give a little extra oomph and dimension to those funny little petal shapes. If you're brand new to Zentangle and you happen to stumble across this video, the Zentangle method was created by Rick Roberts and Maria Thomas as a way to help people feel more creative, more mindful, to have more time in their day. So they created it to be very simple. The original concept of these tiles was that <clears throat> you could do them in about 15 minutes. And to remind people that we're all creative and you can draw anything one stroke at a time. So you notice everything I'm doing, are, they're very simple shapes. And in fact, we teach in Zentangle that if you can write an I, a C, an O, and an S, then you can pretty much draw just about anything. Mary says your place is small, but you're missing a Christmas tree, trying to figure out where to put a small one, or if you want to make one out of paper bags to paint and draw and hang on the wall. Oh my gosh, Mary, that sounds amazing. I love that innovation of wanting to have that festive tree and figuring out the best way to do that for your space. And if you are interested in more information about Zentangle, again, you can purchase our creative bundle and get my intro class as well as three additional classes. And you can always go to Zentangle.com for more information about the history and the method. I notice as I'm going, I'm making those 
petals even a little bit bigger and so I haven't left as much room for blackening. Georgia, what are you doing? My cat is looking for trouble. What are you doing? She's staring at me across the room going, I'm going to get in trouble. It's because she's not, I'm not paying attention to her. She's like wide awake and ready to play this morning. And she has these fun little spiral toys that she loves. And she hides them in corners. And then if I can't find them, I know it's because she's buried them all under the sofa. She loves to hide them. And the longer I sit here with this practice, the more I feel my breathing settle. I feel my body relax. And I can also feel my hand getting tired. Good morning, Tori. Great to see you here. Yeah, I'm having fun. So I took one of Connor's designs, one of my favorites and uh, reduced it so it'll fit in my circle journal that I'm making and printed it on cardstock. How's your Santa painting coming along, Tori? Are you making progress? I can't wait to see the, the finished project. Tori is one of our amazing, you finished it, fantastic. Have you posted a picture of it on social yet? I'll go look. Tori is one of our amazing members of our Sacred Circle community and we're so grateful to have you. And Tori is an amazing artist and painter. I love your painting story. All right, it's coming along nicely. Loving how it's looking, sort of continuing the botanical theme. Sometimes it's fun to take a botanical design like this and add very geometric patterns to it, but I tend to generally prefer the more floral, organic Zentangle patterns than the more geometric or grid-based patterns. And if you're just popping by and, oh, I found you too. I know, it's amazing how great your painting is. All that creativity was just inside you waiting to be unleashed. And I'm glad that we found each other too. Tori and I got to meet in person last year, which was so fun up in Estes Park, Colorado. I can't wait for you to come back to your sister's place, Tori, so I can see you again. Our prompt for today is what is missing in your life right now? What is missing in your life right now? And in this busy, busy season, I think this is a great thing to pause and contemplate and reflect on. Another way of saying what are you miss what are you missing is what do you need more of or 
one of my favorite questions, what are you longing for right now? What are you longing for? And I had shared that what's missing for me is just a little more time and spaciousness in my schedule and it's coming, coming soon. I'm doing a in-person bookmaking workshop here in my studio tomorrow for 13 people. <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to squeeze 13 people in here, but I'm going to figure it out. I didn't want to say no to anybody. All right, it's getting there, trying to move a little more quickly. And yet that's the antithesis of what the Zentangle method is about. So if you're still with me, thank you. If you're just dropping in, thank you. Pop into the chat and say good morning. If you're over on watching on Facebook, I'm not seeing right now the comments on Facebook, but I will go back and pop in and say hello after the recording. And I will not be live tomorrow. My, my goal is to go live as much as possible in December to work in this Write, Paint, Reflect intuitive art journal that I'm making. But because I have a workshop starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow, I will be busy setting up in the morning, but I will be back live first thing Monday morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time. All right, loving how this is looking. And I'm thinking this outside one, I'm going to keep it simple and I'm going to have it repeat this little pattern here. Because I do like repetition in a design. And it's easy with Zentangle to get carried away sometimes with too many patterns and to have designs feel busy, which I also love. I would say that I am an over tangler. I love to fill every little space with patterns and designs. And I want this mandala meditation today to reflect my need for a little more spaciousness. And I love when we're working with intuitive art, we want the outer design to reflect the inner contemplation, right? The right paint reflect, the reflection is important. And as I'm drawing, I'm reflecting on this idea of time and spaciousness. Actually, let's see, maybe we'll just get some nice long leafy shapes in there, still very open. And when I think about the journal that I've been working in, I love mixed media. I love all the layers the collage and the paint and the mark making. And sometimes what's called for is, again, simplicity, a place to rest on the page. So when you're working with intuitive art, really check in and ask yourself, what is it that I need today? Do I need to just scribble? 
and put some color on paper, get some feelings and emotions out. Do I want to take my time to tell a story? Do I need some mindful mandala meditation? All right, I'm loving this one. I love the, again, the simplicity of it. I'm going to cut it out and get it in the journal and then I'm going to shade it. And the reason I'm going to do it in that order, because if I shade it first and then glue it in, I will end up getting graphite everywhere. So time for a little fussy cutting. I'm super excited about my workshop that I'm teaching in person tomorrow. And I took some of Connor's gorgeous sacred circle designs and I printed them out on legal sized nice paper. And one of my favorite combinations is watercolor and colored pencil. So I'm going to have people, we're going to watercolor our covers and then color the designs with colored pencil. And I'm so pleased with how my sample turned out. And I realize it's one of the techniques. So one of the things Connor and I have done for our Sacred Circles membership for next year is to make a list of uh, techniques that we want to teach Connor's working on some fun designs for creating a book with our Sacred Circle designs, making your own book. But I also have come up with a variety of different like tools and supplies that I want to experiment with. I love the simplicity of the black and white, but I also, hmm, maybe I'll leave that little tab on there, let's see. But I also really love seeing what else can I do with my designs. What if that had, oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It was smaller than I thought it was. Oh, it's kind of pretty on this colored background. I was thinking it was just uh, that maybe it was going to be, I didn't measure it, right? I just kind of went for it and it would have been fine if it hung out. But I think I like it on this colored background. And that'll give me some fun options for shading around the edges of it. I thought I was going to paint a face on there, but apparently not. All right. And that must have been some fast tangling. I'm, a, I'm surprised that came together quite as quickly as it did. I'm making sure I get that glue stick all the way to the very, very edges of the design. I'm going to really burnish that down. That cardstock is thick, so I want to make sure that I put some pressure on there. As my friend Andrea said, if you burnish your glue stick, you just um, heat it up a little bit and it will adhere better to the surface. And I want to write on here as I've been doing on the all of them. I am creating time and space. For reflection. Yeah, so that helps me remember what the prompt was that I was writing about. And now I want to come in here with that final, almost final step of the Zen Tingle method, which is to 
add some shading. So I'm going to just take my pencil and start to layer in some graphite in a few different places. Let's see, where'd my little pencil sharpener go? Mm -hmm. Did it get carried away to another table? Highly possible. I feel like I want this pencil to be a little bit sharper in this these tiny little spaces. And when you're shading Zentangle patterns, the intention is to create contrast, not to worry about where the light source is, but literally to create dimension. And just like when we're tingling, I'm going to turn my page, especially working in the round like this, to make it easier for my hand to reach. And I'm going to tingle outside this center circle. I'm also thinking it might be fun to come in with a white gel pen and add some little highlights or maybe even like a, a bright pink gel pen and add some little tiny pops of color to this. And when you're first learning to add shading to your tangle patterns, go light on the graphite. Go light on the graphite. It's really difficult to remove the graphite. So you want to start off light and add as you go. So I'm using a brand new smudge stick or tortillon as they are called. These are available everywhere. They're very inexpensive because I want it that nice sharp tip to be able to get into the little nooks and crannies. And kind of what I want to create here is that sense of the layered effect, right? As if this was a bunch of different circles all kind of stacked together. Again, I'm starting out with a small amount of graphite and then I will go back and add more as needed. Like I think I'm wanting a little bit more around the outside of these petals. So just lightly laying in Going to shade all along inside. I'm going to get one of my older ones that's not as sharp so that I can keep this other tip here nice and sharp because I'm going to lean in with some elbow grease here, really soften up that graphite. And to me, it just makes such a huge difference in the design. And be mindful of as you're adding graphite, you're also building graphite up on your smudge stick as well, right? So if all of a sudden things are looking too dark, it could be because you have a lot of pencil lead built up on your tortillon. And sometimes you don't need to add more pencil. You need to use what's on your tortillon first. Okay, I think we're going to get some little extra drama around the edges of these spirals. And I might shade inside those circles there. Again, everything is an experiment. I don't have 
any particular method to my madness. I'm just looking for places where can I increase contrast and add dimension. The other thing I love about the shading process is you often go through and find where maybe you, like I missed adding that pencil or I might find where I missed filling in a pattern or a line. So it's a, a way of just really getting up close with your own design, seeing maybe what you missed or what you want to add. And it's interesting, so on the, like when I look at this, I really see the contrast, but on the screen in the center here, I'm not seeing as much of the shading. And so then I can just get curious and say, okay, do I want to come in and maybe add even a little bit more depth? Is that being too subtle? And again, you're always better off to start light and add a second layer than to go in really dark at first. Because if it gets too much shading on it, what happens is that it just all looks gray and smudgy as opposed to creating areas where you actually have a lot of contrast. And as I continue to darken the center here, it helps me to make this feel a little rounded. I'm just going to come in and create just, and I'm not even going to smudge this. I want to have some of that be just a little bit darker and stand out a little bit more. And that pencil lead kind of becomes our third color, right? It becomes our third color. So we have black and white and gray. All right, I'm going to call that one done for today. Actually, I'm not. I think I want to shade around the outside edges to make it stand out a little bit more from the background of the design as well. So what happens if I come in and I'm thinking I'm going to need to so I could do that with a pen. I could also do it with my Stabilo. Where did it go? There it is. If I bring in this nice softer, darker black, The pen feels a little too precise. I want it to look a little bit more like a drop shadow around the edge here. And I desperately need my pencil sharpener and I have no idea where it went. Oh, there's one. I usually have multiple ones floating around. Perfect. 
So I often talk about how baby wipes are essential to um, my studio. I also love this Stabilo and one of the other things that I think is always essential to have nearby in your studio is a pencil sharpener, especially if like me, you work a lot with colored pencils. One of the secrets to design and control and making things really the way you want them and to getting into little nooks and crannies is to make sure you keep your pencils nice and sharp. Me too, Mary. I'm loving how the little bit of color in the background and the pattern is creating a lovely foil for our black and white design here. Zoom out just a little bit. So another lovely page in our journal. Where'd the rest of the journal go? So half the fun is putting it all back together and seeing how it's unfolding one little page at a time and letting the pages sort of create themselves right letting the the pages create themselves letting those stories really unfold and as i go through i remember all the different prompts for self-reflection, the things that I was thinking about. I have a little note on each page. I did, after yesterday's video, go back and add colored pencil to this page over the top of the watercolor to brighten that up a little bit. And again, just loving how this is coming together. And I did decide this morning how I want to do the binding on this. So this one is definitely fat enough and sorry that is uh, blurry when I lift it up there. So I'm going to stitch multiple signatures individually and then when I'm done I will show you how I'm going to bind them using a ribbon weaving binding that I learned from my friend Andrea. As always thank you so much for joining me live. Thank you for catching the replay. I'm Dr. Manette. This is Painting in Your PJs Live, and I will be back bright and early on Monday morning for more of our Write, Paint, Reflect 21 Days of Self-Reflection. Thank you so much, and don't forget to go over and check out that end of year sale on our self-care bundle. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Bye-bye, everybody.